After the fall of the Ben Ali regime in January 2011, his clan lost its power and resources. The agents of the dictator have spread throughout the Tunisian territory and formed gangs to take advantage of the instability and lack of security in some remote regions. To them, violence and theft are perceived as a unique way of earning a living. Armed gangs have specialized in stealing the cattle of the poor and helpless farmers. In the high mountains of the northwest of Tunisia, Ibrahim Firgeni spends weeks away from his family to provide the water and the pasture for his sheep. Ibrahim explains that the heavily armed gangs of thieves follow the traces of the cattle and that they aggress the herdsmen without even thinking about the consequences of their acts. One has to be careful day and night because the gangs can attack at any time. They have no principles and they ignore the fact that a poor herdsman will lose his livelihood. After a series of aggressions, it is no longer possible to cross a lonely herdsman's path in the mountains, as the very simple act of providing food for the cattle has become a risky adventure. The solidarity of the herdsmen is the only way of repelling the gangs. We are poor but solidary. We are tired of watching out. We are protecting our cattle and our lives. May God help us and give us patience. In spite of the solidarity of the herdsmen, the powerful gangs generally succeed in scaring the helpless people and stealing their animals. The farmer Abdel Nurbali explains that the old are the most vulnerable and that the collaboration of all the farmers with the police has had some good results. About a month ago, armed criminals stole 30 sheep from a poor farmer who couldn't defend himself. We've organized a campaign in the region along with the police and caught the thieves hidden in a mountainous area. As the first responsible for the safety of the herdsmen, the Agriculture Minister Mohammed bin Salim expresses his worries about the spread of the stealing of the cattle in Tunisia. The minister explained that he is collaborating with the Interior Ministry to stop the scourge. Stealing the cattle is not a new phenomenon, but it has spread during this unstable period. We have had many complaints from different parts of the country. We've informed the Interior Ministry to provide more control in the remote regions. The Agriculture Minister claims that the major challenge to the stability in the northwest of the country is not only securing the pastures for the herdsmen, but also facing the crime of setting fire to the wheat fields. The phenomenon is a threat to the Tunisian economy because it is partly dependent on the outcome of the harvest season. All the Tunisians, including the authorities, are convinced that setting fire to the wheat fields is the worst crime that a criminal of the ousted regime could commit. Therefore, we do not pardon those who attempt to damage our harvest. We're in the northwest of Tunisia, in the agricultural region of Beja. Yusuf Azeb, the regional manager of the security of the agricultural lands, has confirmed the minister's claim. He asserts that the ministry has demanded from the farmers and the citizens in the governorate of Beja to participate to the protection of the harvest. The agriculture minister distributed a decree calling for the protection of the harvest. We have constituted local and regional protection committees of hundreds of men. We are working 24 hours a day for the whole period of the harvest to deter the agents of the former regime from setting fire to the huge wheat fields. Some of the criminals of the ousted regime have attempted to set fire to the wet fields. The criminality in the northwest does not only target the poor, even the wealthy farmers are suffering. Many criminals think that they are still in the era of the ousted president and claim the right to have a percentage from the benefits of the harvest season. The gangs of the ousted regime threaten to set fire to the harvest if they don't get one over ten of the benefits of the farmers. Some can't resist and give them bribes, while a minority accepts to coordinate with the police, but the criminals are rarely arrested. Some farmers spend up to 16 hours a day in the lands. Lida, a 46-year-old man, drives the combined harvester under the hot sun to earn a decent living and to provide for his family. 
He's convinced that unlike in the past, this year's harvest belongs to the people and that they risk their lives protecting the natural gift of God. Tunisia does no longer belong to the ousted dictator and his clan. Now it belongs to the people. The criminals don't think about the future of the young generation. They don't care. They will never win this war even if they set fire to the harvest. With the help of God, we are ready to work in the worst weather conditions to ensure better future for our families. We are still optimistic despite the challenges. God will always protect us even if we failed in defending our harvest. The evaluation of the success of the season of the harvest in the northwest of Tunisia does not only take the quantity and the quality of the wheat into consideration. In fact, the security of the herdsmen and the farmers is also an important factor that nobody can neglect. The presence of the agents from the Assad dictatorial regime and the government's fight against criminals proves that the revolution is an ongoing process that won't be complete until security is imposed throughout Tunisia. Despite all the security challenges, this year's harvest has been exceptional and it is hoped to boost the Tunisian economy. Abnen Shawishi for Deporters File, Beja.